Hello, everybody, and welcome on back to a new week of Betting Weekly WTA. And what a week and a few days on top we have in store over at the WTA tournament and the A to B tournament this week at the 1000 event in Indian Wells. It's the big tournament of the year outside the tennis majors. And I'd like to say, looking at the women's draw to break down what is a fantastic offering over in California is our WTA handicapper. It's uh, Mr. Roy Giovanni. Rory, I haven't spoken to you for a 10 days or so, mate. It's a strange day. We're recording this on Tuesday. The tournament starts tomorrow on Wednesday. And the seeds are in action on Thursday. It's a 10-day tournament because uh, it's a 1,000 event. How are you? I'm not bad. I'm not bad. Um, looking back on um, our last tournaments, which didn't really go to plan, a couple of wild results, as, as we've been having for a few weeks on the women's tour. But um, San Diego, I suppose, obviously one place to start. Katie Bolter, fantastic performance by her. Um I was a bit disappointed when she knocked out my pick, Lesia Serenko, in the first round. But, uh, I mean, she didn't have to play very well. Serenko was very poor that day. Um, but Bolter got better and better as the tournament went on. Um, I have to say, I mean, apologies. It sounds like after timing. I did fancy her against Emma Navarro. Um, similar players in some ways, both with really big forehands, but there's a massive difference on the backhand. Um it's just not a threatening shot for the American and Bolton was hitting winners with it. And, and that was a big difference. Uh, my other pick, Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova. Uh, she was a set up on your pick, Marta Kostiuk, and Kostiuk came back to win uh, and reach the final. She beat Jessica Pegula in the semis. I mean, conditions were really slow in San Diego, um, partly due to the cool weather. Um, but I made them the slowest courts of the year so far. Um, service hole percentage was only 61.2 and, and credit to the two finalists especially Bolsa you know her previous tour win came on the grass at Notting um, she's a better player in quicker conditions and, and you could say the same about Kostiuk although she did win in, in Austin last year which wasn't particularly quick um, but what they they showed was an ability to stay in longer rallies you know, obviously we know they can both hit winners, but but they were able to stay in the long rally. So that, that was really good. Um, over to Austin. I'm glad we didn't have any picks for that one. Um, I mean, I was interested in the winner, Anastasia Sevastova and Julia Riera. And, and Sevastova got through that. Then she beat, beat Sloane Stevens. She was looking really good. And she was a set and a break up on Anna Karolina Schmidlova in the quarters and then got injured. So that was a bit unlucky. Danielle Collins, unlucky as well. I mean, her... She was saying her she struggled with rheumatoid arthritis for a few years and it flared up on the morning of her quarterfinal. She says it's something that happens when it's a bit cold. And um, so that really put paid to her chances. Um, thankfully for her, Indian Wells, her last Indian Wells, will be a bit warmer um, for the duration. So um, that works in her favour. We had a final, all Chinese final, uh, Yuan Yuan and Zhi Yu Wang. Um, did play a bit quicker than last year. Um, service hole percentage was 66.6. Um, and Yuan, uh, she attracted my attention at the US Open qualifying in 2022. Um, she won her first title. I mean, she still looks like she's being held together by kinesio tape. But um, if she stays fit, she can win more titles at a 250 level, maybe even a 500 in time. But uh, yeah, it's... Um, Obviously, none of the really big names in action, with the exception, perhaps, of Jessica Pegula. Um, but now it's on to Indian Wells, as you say, one of the biggest tournaments on the calendar outside the slams. It really is a big tournament when you look at the 32 seeds. It's got the feel of a major. It's, it's considered the fifth tennis major, and it does look that in the field. Uh, if you haven't looked at the field, the draw has just been announced yesterday. We recorded this on Tuesday. It was early morning on Tuesday, uh, late on Monday night over in uh, California. Um, all the best players are here. Um, there's a 128 player draw where the action starts in round one tomorrow on Wednesday. Head across to the Bet Rivers website. Uh, the action start will be starting around about two o'clock Eastern time, and you'll have the order plate isn't out yet, but you'll see all the match prices available on the Web Bet Rivers website and probably about 32 different markets on these first round matches, which will be the best tennis offering you will find state size. 
bar none. Uh, all the seeds, 32 seeds, have got a, a buy into round two. So they don't have to play in the first round. They're straight into the last 64. And let's have a look at the draw before. Well, actually, well, actually before we go into the draw, Roy, uh, just give us a little bit about the conditions here because I'm looking at some previous winners. I'm looking at the previous winners here. And one thing that struck me, um, last year it was Rebecca and Sabalenka in the final. But the one thing that struck me in the last 10 years at the Indian Wells event, 10 different winners. It's, you know, when you consider like the domination of some of the leading women pl players at that period of time who were winning majors, multiple majors, only 10 previous winners, uh, the last 10 years, all new, all 10 different pl uh, players. Serena Williams only won it twice, which surprised me when you consider how dominant she was, you know, in, in, the, in the 90s and early 2000s. She's only won it twice. And who's the only player to successfully defend the title? Who's the only player to successfully defend the title at Indian Wells? Oh, that's a good one. Um, Enan, maybe? Or Kleisters? To show how long ago it was, it was Martina Navratilova. Gee, 1990, goodness, grief, goodness So So nobody's, apart from Navratilova, has, has, has won back-to-back. -back, and Rebecca, Rebecca is trying to do that. Uh, before we look at the draw, give us some of the conditions and what you know. What it, it's a it doesn't look you know some of the winners. I mean, Rebecca and Strong take which are like, okay, they're, they're top of the game. Prior to that, Badosa and Drescu, Zarka. I mean, we've had some. I mean, we've had some shock finalists, Kazakina, Kenning at the time. You know, Azarenka's done, done well here. She does well at all these tournaments. She's won it twice. A uh, beaten finalist in twenty twenty one as well. So it's not been dominated by the favourites. It hasn't. I mean, there is a bit of a disclaimer that because Serena did boycott the tournament for a few years because of one incident uh, on court. So she she probably would have won more. Um, kind of coincides with that period in tennis when we we're having new slam winners every time as well. Um, I think Andrescu won it that year. She then went on to the US Open. I think Osaka was the same. She sort of made her break for Indian Wells and then won, won the US Open. Um, but conditions-wise... Out of the two, obviously, this is the first half of the Sunshine Double, Miami being the second half. This one is the, the slower of the two, um, usually quite significantly. Didn't play that slow last year. Service hole percentage was 65, which puts it kind of right in the middle as far as court speed goes. It has played a bit slower. I seem to remember last year talking about Indian Wells and it being a bit too paced in that, uh, you know, it's quite warm. So through the air, the ball seems to travel reasonably quickly. But the the surface itself last year certainly was dead. I mean, it's almost, you know, just really just used to sit up. Um, and that could well be the case this year. Uh, you know, we're, you know, say quick through the air. So the servers are going to have some joy. But after that, it's going to be long rallies. Um we have had some temperature. Put, had some, yeah, I was going to say the weather. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to interrupt. You. I was just going to That's say right. that the weather in recent weeks on the uh, the uh, the west coast of America has been has been pretty poor. I mean, lots of wind, lots of rain, lots of you know gales. We've seen some of the some stuff on Twitter and social media. Some really bad storms, and the weather on Wednesday doesn't look good. There's, there's a bit of rain around Wednesday, but obviously it gets hotter as the week goes on. So the early rounds there could be a a few shocks. It could it could be a tournament where the, the conditions change as the week goes on at the court speeds. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I think I was seeing most of the week, I think you're looking at sort of mid-70s, mid-70s Fahrenheit, um, that's so mid-20s Celsius, looks fairly steady. As you say, yeah, Wednesday doesn't look great. Um, but after that, you know, Thursday's quite cool, but after that, it's kind of back to sort of normal. I mean, you, you kind of expect a bit warmer conditions in Indian Wells. Mm. So, um, I mean, I was saying San Diego played very slow because of, the cooler conditions. I mean, it could be a bit cooler than normal for Indian Wells. So that would make it a bit slower. That would take the advantage away from the big servers. As you say, we're back in a Sabalenka final last year. Um, in, in a tournament, you wouldn't have really expected them to be contesting the final. Um, that would have been a more likely final in Miami. Of course, we're back and didn't reach the Miami final and lost to Petra Kvitova. But um, we landed you 101 Hundred to one shot I had, pick, so and, and never and was never allowed to bet again with that said firm <laughs> after that. <laughs> That's just, brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, one. I think. No, I, well, I think. I, um, I think what we're going to see is, you know, you know, it's 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 almost it's medium pace. It's it's probably going to be a bit slower than medium pace. It won't be massively dissimilar to what we saw in the Middle East. Probably a bit slower than what we saw in the Middle East, but but nothing out of the ordinary. 
uh, unless it is you know like last year if it is you've got this kind of really slow bounce surface that could make it you know quite quite grueling and then quite a long 10 days for the players to just highlight uh how good this draw is i think every all, all the leading players there's no one missing is there i've gone trying to i haven't I'm looking at the, the players. I can't think of anybody who's missing. No, I mean, Mukova's injured. She's got her yeah. wrist. She's just had wrist surgery. Apart from her, I think they're all there. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a cracking tournament. It's, uh, it's as you say, 128 in the draw. Um, it, it, there shouldn't be many excuses either. Um, but, yeah, the draw, I think, uh, is a bit lopsided. We'll look into that very shortly. Before we just come on to the draw, obviously we said we had a one thousand event a uh, couple of weeks back in in Dubai, which produced a, a huge shock in terms of the finalists and and who who was in it. I mean, you know, it was, yeah, no one would have predicted Paulini and Kanaskaya to get through. Um, we spoke on this show through many times at the early part of the season. Australian Open said the women's game has never been better. There's this, this elite four that are pulling away. Do you think that? You know, do you think that that elite four will progress, or do you think we got a little bit carried away with that, thinking they are going to be way, way ahead of everyone, and the field is actually closing in on the top form? We could have have a fantastic end of season, you know, because the market is still dominated. We're coming to the odds in a minute, still dominated by that top four, even though results last week we saw emergence of Bolter, we've seen the emergence of Callum Sky, we've seen Palini, we've seen Navarro, we've seen all these players who are just breaking through into the top sort of twenty in the world and and winning thousand events now. I think big four are still the most likely players to win the tournament. But depending on the draw and conditions, other players do have a chance if they play really, really well, as Paulini and Kalinskaya did in Dubai, especially Kalinskaya. I mean, she beat she beat Sfiontech, she beat um, who else? I think she beat oh, I can't remember who else she beat. She beat about two or three of the top players. She beat Goff. Uh, she beat Goff and Sfiontech. Um so, yeah, I, st- I I mean, I don't think the odds are wrong. I still think the big four are the best four players in the world and are still the most likely players to win the tournament. Now, obviously, when you're having a bet, you're looking at value and, and you know, you're not necessarily backing the player most likely to win. I mean, we'll look at the draw, but for instance, Fiontech's got a stinker. In the She's got a horrible draw. If she wins this tournament, she'll have done really well. Um, Rybakina doesn't have a particularly easy draw. Sabalenka probably has the easiest draw of the big four, but Indian Wells probably isn't her best best tournament. It's a bit slow for her. So all these things factor into it, and then you've got to look at the price of the lively outsiders, and you kind of think you kind of weigh it up. And I mean, as I say, back to your original point, the big four are still the most likely players to win it, but you couldn't rule out top 20 30 just takes one of them to you know get hot and they could win a tournament like this i mean we saw it in dubai and we could see it here if you look at the betting with bet rivers on their website the top four dominate we're going to come on to the pro- then prices in a minute and if you bat the four of them combined it's minus 1100 that the winner is comes from those top four so that shows you that that there is this sort of I, i'm not quite sure i was really really at the beginning of the season, I thought the top four were going to win everything. I thought there was, yeah, all, especially too. the big tournaments. <laughs> but in the last few months or so, I've seen Trontek struggle. I've seen Sabalenka. Obviously, obviously, she was brilliant in the Australian Open, which hasn't at the same since. Only one tournament, but not much to go on there. Goff, I think the pressure of now winning a major and everyone expecting and the media pressure on her, she's not playing well. Rebecca, always injured. So, you know, we may have got a little bit carried away on it, but uh, we'll see if there's an emergence. We'll see where their value lies. Uh, you're talking about the draw. Let's have a look at the draw. And the draw obviously has got, uh, I'm not going to give you every single seed, but I'll give you the main one. So in the top half of the draw, we have Iga Shrontek, who's the number one seed. And she's scheduled to play Noshkova in the last 32. Noshkova was the girl that beat her in the Australian Open. So that's a really interesting battle there. But she's also got to come through Danielle Collins, which is going to be an interesting one if the American gets past her first round match. Got a lot of support in her last uh, Indian Wells tournament. Madison Keys plays Alexandrova, Ostapenko against Kudometova. Vekic against Shabur, who could also play Mira Andreeva, who absolutely blitzed her. So uh, that's an interesting one there we have. Um, in the in their last meeting, Andreeva blitzed her. Rybakina will play Potapova. Kalinskaya v. Paulini in the repeat of that uh, Dubai final. Haddad Maya against Pavlichenkova. 
and Kostjuk von Drusev. And then that's the top half of the draw. That's only to get to the last 32. Uh, so that shows you the highlight. In the bottom, it how, how, highlights how strong this is. In the bottom half of the draw, we have Ken Win Zheng, the Australian Open uh, finalist against a two times champion here, Azarenka in the last 32. Sorana Kirstia up against Kazakina. Samsonova v. Mertens. Kalanina against Goff. Pegula Fernandez. Garcia, Zachary, Svitolina, Navarro. Yastromenska against Sabalenka. Now, on that draw, the bottom half does seem a lot, lot easier than that top half. That top half of the draw, as already said, the route for Swantec, Swantec is tough, but the top half does seem a lot more difficult than that bottom half of the draw. Now, here are the odds. Uh, Iga Swantec is the favourite. She's the world number one. Not surprised to see her the favourite. She's three to one with Bet Rivers. Sabalenka is plus 320. She's the second favourite in the bottom half of the draw. Rebakina is six. Uh, Coca Goff is six fifty. Then we go into the the, the bigger prices. Jessica Pegula eighteen to one. I'm amazed that she's fifth favorite. This one I wouldn't even have her in the top twenty. Uh, Ostapenko twenty five to one. Anja Burr twenty eight to one. Another one wouldn't even have her in the top twenty. Twenty eight to one. Kenwin Zheng twenty eight to one. Von Drusifer, uh thirty thirty one. Always interests me. She's always a big pricer. But um, it doesn't, doesn't put it together, but we've got the capabilities. Mira Andreva, the youngster, 40 to 1. Danielle Collins, 45 to 1. Sam Sonova, 45 to 1. Callum Skyer, 45 to 1. Katie Bolter, uh, the, the Brit who won last week uh, in the form of her life, 45 to 1. Zachary, 50 to 1. Um, Naomi Zaki, 50 to 1. Pavlachenko, 50 to 1. Noskova, 50 to 1. Svitolina, 50 to 1. Azarenka, 60 to 1. Hannah Meyer, 60 to 1. Madison Key, 60 to 1. And Kazakina, 66 to 1. Then, they, then you have the likes of Pliskova, Badosa, and another former winner here. Fernandez, Garcia, Paulini. I mean, it's a massive draw. And really, you can make a case for 20 of those players to win this tournament. Who are you going to make a case for, Roy? Um, I just want to sort of go back to Sviontek, first of all, her sure. draw, because it's awful. I, I think it's the toughest draw she could have got. So Collins first up, as I mentioned, Collins uh, obviously injured in, in Austin, but her last Indian wheel, she's going to have loads of support. If she gets through that, it's Noskova or Bolter in the third round. Um, and then in the quarterfinals, it's most likely Yelena Ostapenko, who's got a 4-0 and record against her. So <laughs> it doesn't get any more difficult. Uh, I mean, and if it's not Ostapenko, it's possibly Shabur or Donna Vekic, who beat Sabalenka in Dubai, or Veronica Kudometova, who's capable of turning it on with her, sir. I mean, it's an awful start to the tournament of Sionte. Really, really difficult. Um, the bottom, the second quarter, the bottom half of the top half, um, Rebakan is obviously the standout, but I'm really against her at the moment. She played a lot of tennis early in the season. Um, she won Abu Dhabi, then she got to the final in Doha, lost to Sviontek, and then she pulled out of Dubai, um, suffering from a gastrointestinal um, illness. Um, Not the first time that's happened to her. She's done no, that a few times. Exactly. This happened last season a lot as well. And I'm just wondering if it's a bit of a pattern um, that every now and then she is going to get ill or get injured. I mean, she had a lot of niggling injuries last year. I think she got COVID in the French Open as well. And you know, it's just some players it's are, are just a bit more injury prone, illness prone than others. And I'm just wondering if that's the case with Rebecca. Um, she is the outstanding player in that second quarter, although, you know, you've got Anastasia Potapova, who's always one to watch in slower conditions. You mentioned Paolini and Kalinskaya are there as well. Had Ajmaya looks out of form, but Pavlyuchenko and Kostyuk are both playing well. But the one I like in the second quarter is actually Marketa von Drusova, who she was looking right back to her best in Dubai, and she was a set and 5-1 up on Serana Kirstia and then dropped the lot I don't know what happened there but you know it was an inexplicable collapse and, and she went out as I say before then she'd looked right back to her best and you know I think these are conditions that will suit her um I think she got to the quarterfinals not so long ago that's right in 2019 um and that was the same year she reached the French Open final so that was when she was kind of in her sort of first 
sort of good run of form. And then obviously she had a lot of injuries. She, she got to the final of the Tokyo Olympics, but after that she had wrist surgery and all sorts. And then she came back and, and won Wimbledon last year. I just think she's back on, back on the upward, upward tra trajectory. I think this might be the time to catch her. And one thing in her favour, if Ostapenko does beat Sviontek, Von Drusva has a, a 2-0 and o head to head record. Funny enough, they were both in 2019 uh, consecutive at Indian Wells and Miami. Um, it's a tough bit of the draw. I mean, as we said, the top half is fiendish. It's really difficult. But I just think with her variation, um, I think she's back in form. Sort of slow, medium courts were always sort of her preference. She made her breakthrough. I think it was at Linz in 2017 when she was really young. And she won that tournament from nowhere. And everyone was talking about her for the French Open. And, and she didn't get very far. But she's always, you know, hard courts have always been her favourite. Obviously, she won Wimbledon from nowhere. But I, I don't think that was really a fluke. And I think she can prove that here. Um, and her draw, you know, up to Rivakina doesn't look, you know, you know, it's tricky. It's difficult. I mean, you've got Kostya, you've got Pavlyuchenkova. But if Andrews was on her game, I, I think she beats a lot of these players uh, just because, you know, she's a lefty. She's got a lot of variation. She's got probably the best drop shot in the game. Um, if she strings it together, she can she can go far here. And uh, $30, I mean, Bet River's definitely keeping the right side of her at $30. Um, but um, I think she, she, she'll be my pick from the top half. Mm. I mean, you look at the draw she has, I mean, it, if she's on top form, it's very hard to not to see her make the quarterfinals. And then obviously Rebecca awaits there. And obviously Rebecca's draw is not easy. Kanovskaya, Badosa, former winner here. I mean, in round two. Yeah. I mean, and, and I know she's not playing very well, but uh, Paola Badosa, but she, she can, is more than capable of match Rebecca. And Rebecca is obviously coming in with injury concerns. Um, Potapova as well yeah. would be tough. Paolini, we're really ruling tough. out a 1,000 winner here. Paolini in that section as well. Yeah. So I do think that that little quarter, uh, that to the, that, that section through to um, that part of the, the, the second quarter where Von Dusfer is, is the weakest part of the draw. And I, I can't see her not getting to the quarterfinals. And if we get Rebecca in the beat, we'll be favour against anybody in, in the quarterfinals. She's a major champion. She's 30 to 1 with Bet Rivers. Uh, and you can get a half the odds 1 2. So you're getting 15 to 1 for her to make the final. We Trontek has got a very tough draw in that top half. Ostapenko, erratic to say the very, very least. Um, Rebecca, no injury concerns. So Von Drusser at 31 is a nice play there. I, I do like that play. And that each way, the odds uh, with Bet Rivers. Remember, there's a whole host of first round matches in the world that are available on the Bet Rivers website. And if you do place a bet at Bet Rivers, you can bet live and watch live. Every single one of these matches will be live streamed on the website as long as you place a wager. You're able to watch them from the comfort of your own home or in the office or your lunch break, wherever you are on your mobile device as well. So you've got that added bonus to be able to watch every single match here at Indian Wells on the Bet Rivers website if you place a bet. Now move across to the bottom half of the draw. And as we said, we think this is a lot easier. You know, the top half, is, we just named off six or seven potential winners there. The bottom half of the draw does seem a lot weaker. Um, Sabalenka is the obvious choice with that that that, uh, that draw she's been given there. But you're paying the premium at plus 320. Uh, Coco Goff will be very, very heavily supported when she returns back to America. Obviously, the US Open champion. And she, she's going to have a huge amount of support here in Indian Wells. She's plus 650. But the pressure on Goff is huge every time she takes to court now. And it intensifies when she does so in America. So at 650, I think she's one to fade. Um, what do you like here this bottom half? Um, yeah, the third quarter is probably, I'm not going to say the easiest, but it's, you know, Goff dominates it, obviously, in the betting as well. I mean, her main opposition in that quarter, former champions, Naomi Osaka and Victoria Azarenka, probably her main threats. Although I will put in a good word for Serana Kirstia, who made the quarters last year uh, and then made the semis in Miami. Mm. And she's in good form. She reached the last four in Dubai. Um, so, you know, Goff should come through it, but obviously we've seen her disappoint at the last couple of tournaments. Um, yeah, not not convinced by her form, and she's never made the semi-finals Indian well. So that would be another sort of mark against her. Uh, the bottom quarter, I think, is really interesting. Um, obviously, we mentioned Sabalenka, runner-up last year. One match, as we said, since winning her second Australian Open, you know, going down six love in the decider to Donna Vekic. That was a, a very 
strange performance. I mean, we have mentioned Vekic as a really good head to head against Sabalenka. Um, I, I quite like, really like Alina Svitolina in, in the bottom quarter. I mean, other players in that bottom corner, you've got Jessica Pagula, who not sure is in the greatest of form, and I think is, is another player who'd like it quicker. Uh, Maria Sakkari did reach the final in 2022, but you know, recently split with her coach. Um, she's yet to rediscover her form. She she won that Guadalajara 1000 last year, but um, you know, she'd have got a lot of points for that. And at the moment, she's going to lose a lot of points. You know, she's str- she's going to struggle to hold on to that ranking. Um, but Svitolina, I'm really really interested in. She reached semis in 2019, uh, where she went out to Andrescu, who won the tournament. Um, since her baby break, she's looked a stronger player all round, especially Benton. Uh, and she played well in Melbourne. Um, she had to quit against Noshkova due to a back injury. Uh, in Dubai, when she came back in Dubai, she lost in straight sets to Sviontek. Uh, it's no disgrace in that. Uh, and she's been competitive against Sabalenka in the past. Um, Sabalenka's you know, they're the standout player in this section. There's no doubt about that. But I said, you see, that defeat in Dubai, these slower conditions aren't ideal for her. And looking at the draw, I don't think she's going to get a test until round four when she'll face Svitolina. Um, And I'd give her a chance. I'd really give her a chance. And I think 60 to 1, $60 about Alina Svitolina uh, looks a really big price. And, I, you know, when I was looking at the draw, it's funny because sometimes you take a while to decide who, who you like. And... Von Drusova and, and, and Svitolina were on my shortlist before even looking at the draw, uh, along with Sviontek and Ostapenko, were, were my main ones. And obviously Sviontek and Ostapenko in that really hard top quarter. So it was quite easy choosing them. And when I was thinking about prices, I thought Svitolina would be shorter than Drusova, given the draw. Um, because the way I see it is Svitolina, Svitolina's main obstacle is Sabalenka. If she beats Sabalenka, I think she can get to the final. And so obviously, I, we don't know the conditions as well. I mean, it could be quite slower. That, that early yeah. bad, bit, bit of bad weather could make this a lot slower than we we thought. I mean, I know she she did well to to, uh, to get to the final last year. But, you know, she shouldn't have got to the final last year. Look at the, the cork speed, should you? She wouldn't, it would, would it be a tournament that wouldn't have suited her. No. Um, and I think it's likely to be slower than last year. I think it played a bit quicker than last year. As I say, the, with the conditions, it's a tricky one because... You know, through the air, it looks pretty quick, you know, when it's warm. Um, but as soon as it hits the surface, it just bounces up and it's such a slow bounce. So I, I think given, and the conditions could change, as you say, I think I'd definitely be against Sabalenka here, even though her draw doesn't look the worst by any stretch. I mean, that bottom half is so much easier than the top. But I think someone like Svitolina could have the beating of her here. It's all about the price, Rory. I mean, Sabalenka has got the easiest draw. She's going to be the, the most likely, but she's plus 320. I'm just going to disappoint you slightly, though. Svitolina's actually been cut with better room. She was 60. She's now 50. So ah. uh, she said ah. the, line, the line has actually <laughs> moved a little bit there. We're now down to 50 to one. But, uh, you know, that's the, you know, this is this is about education as well as, you know, we want to tip winners, but we're not going to keep picking winners at three dollars and minus one plus 115 if we don't believe that they're right they're the right price so that's why we're going for some big prices and obviously with our run of form we could have loser 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 and then we could have a 50 to 1 winner so you know it's all about the long term would be nice yeah well, no, we, <laughs> it, we, it, we hit we hit the 100 to 1 last year with, with committed so that yeah that took a you know that, that was on the back of a bad run so i wouldn't worry too much about that and the other thing if you look at Svitolina this year i know she was injured in, in the australian open where she retired had to retire after three at losing three nil against Noshka in the last 16 but the only two players to beat her this year are Iga Svantec and Coco Goff and Coco Goff was a tough one she, she had a chance yeah, to take the first yeah. set in the final Auckland so she's she's only lost to the best and uh you know she could be a player under the radar i think the conditions will suit her the only thing about her obviously is that she's coming towards the end of her career you know she's saying a bit of a resurgence but there's a lot of players who are a lot more hungry and want to desire in it. But on a day, she's capable of, of going deep in this tournament at 50 to 1. In a tournament that has a history of, of shocks and strange first wins. First-time winners. First-time winners. Yeah. yeah. It, it, could, it could be her time. So both of those are first-time winners as well. So that, that sort of goes with the trend. So Von Drusseva at 30 to 1. Svitolina at 50 to 1. 
If I had to say to you, who do you want to fade? Where's your fades? Where's your, any any fades? Any players you'd look at as hard? Spiontek, given the draw, um, yeah. is a fade for me. Um, and and Rebekina, I think, just, I think, a sort of injury profile, for want of a better phrase, just doesn't fill me with confidence. She'll probably go out and win it without dropping a set now, but I, I just, I just get that feeling. I'm just getting a sort of deja vu feeling as from last year, just when, you know, things should be going for her. And and the conditions as well. I, I think the conditions are going to be against Rubakina and Sabalenka and, and more in favour of the likes of Goff and Sviontek. But Sviontek's draw, goodness me, that mm. she could not have got a worse draw. You do tend to find that uh, in the American service, they, you know, they try to make the courts uh, suitable to their players, to so Pegula and... Uh... And Goff would want it a little bit slower for these tournaments. So he might be I think Peggy would want it quicker, to be honest. I think they've they've tended to be more in favour of Goff recently because she's more likely to win it. Um Pegula, I'm just not sure. She's I mean, a massive fade for me. I yeah, think she's she's yes, they so split with her coach. She's possessed to be working on her serve. I think she's working with um Mark Knowles, the old doubles player. Um but I think Pegula is is a player who has talent, don't get me wrong, but I think she's made the most of her talent. Yeah. I think she's done extremely well to be a top five player. I don't see her, you know, she's never quite got to the point where she was ever really going to win a slam. And I think that's as good as she is. She could surprise me, but I think we might have seen the best of her. Yeah, she will play either Pliskova or Blinkova in round two. That is not them. easy. And I, I think she's really gonna, I, think, I think she'll get beaten that much. So I think Andre Burr, and when she plays against Andreeva, who absolutely annihilated oh, her in Melbourne, yeah. in Melbourne, yeah. And I would go for Andreeva as well. So Andre Burr will be a fave for me. I think she's she's in, in all kinds of problem with her. Yeah, with us with her tennis game at the moment. Uh, just remember, there's a few ways to follow all the action here. Um, um, Rory's over in Madrid at the moment from his uh, from his house in his apartment in Madrid. I've just come back from, from Dubai. As you've seen my my antics and stuff on our socials, on, so our, if follow us on our Instagram and our Twitter account, at Because We Win. And uh, I've just had a message from Sean Calvert, who's landed safely in LA. I'm not quite sure we're going to be swinging on a hammock and drinking pina coladas by the pool, but uh, <laughs> we'll wait and see. But the first video come through, he's sitting in an airport lounge with a jacket on, getting frustrated because his luggage hasn't turned up yet. So uh, I don't think it's going to be the same kind of style. Different vibe. Different vibe. Very, very different vibe. But following that, and even less, I'm sure that Sean will pick up the uh, intensity and he'll be at the tennis courts of Indian Wells giving you the update on the ATP tour. Um, Myself and Sean will be on a little bit later on this evening. We're doing our first Betting Weekly Game Bet match, which you can get by subscribing to Betting Weekly Studios on YouTube, our YouTube channel. Uh, Great views last week. Uh, Loads of new content coming up, uh, breaking records every week. Lots of new people joining. So thank you very much if you're joining. If If you want to make a comment on this video, please make a comment. Give us a like because it helps the algorithms and gets us more and more views as well. And remember to download the Betting Weekly WTA show on your preferred podcast provider across all those as well. So they're the ways to follow us on Instagram, socials, uh, on YouTube, and on your preferred podcast provider. Rory's picks uh, in Indian Wells, top half of the draw, Von Drusser at 30 to 1, bottom half of the draw, Svitolini was trying to nick the 60s, but that's gone. It's now 50s. There's a half the odds one too, so 25 to 1 to make the final for Svitolina, 15 to 1 to make the final for Von Drusser, which does look uh, a value couple of picks uh rory good luck over the next 10 days and thanks I'll mate be a you bit too. of a break we'll, we'll be back two weeks from now when we'll we looking at the tournament in miami yeah yeah i think so yeah because that's another midweek start another big draw another good tournament um exciting one so i like miami because i mean we used to chat to james james blake who's the director of, of miami and he's always been quite keen on having as a more kind of you know a bit different from the usual slow media tournaments we get. So it's a bit quicker and it's a bit more of an exciting tournament. And uh, no, I'm really looking forward to that. Yep. And I'll be heading to Miami. I'll be going to Miami. Oh, soon. will you? Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, I'm taking my son. It's my son's birthday. So it's a birthday trip. We're going to watch some tennis. We're going to watch some NBA basketball. So I'm looking forward nice. to that in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, but in the meantime, loads of content on the YouTube channel. Lots of soccer come up. The Champions League is really hotting up as well. There'll be Champions League action on Wednesday, Europa League on Thursday, and the business end across European soccer as well. So lots of great content, lots of great betting tips. All the handicappers are in great form. 
uh, as well on there. So uh, a bit of really profitable uh, weekend and looking to continue this week on the tennis. It's a great weekend in tennis. Here at Bet Rivers, we've got you covered. Head across to the Bet Rivers website. You will not see a better array of tennis markets available with any other sports book across America. Uh, have a good day. Good luck with your picks this week, Rory. And we'll catch you again in 10 days or two weeks from now for Miami. Take care.